Hi everybody, my name is Garth Harwood. I'm the Director of Education here at Hidden Villas Environmental Education Program. Today I'd like to talk to you about how the different structures of plants help them grow and survive. There are actually six different parts of a plant that are very important in this respect. At Hidden Villa we grow them all and enjoy eating them too. I think a fun way to learn about these might be if my friend Colleen here might be willing to get turned into a plant. What do you say, Colleen? Sure. Okay, I'm gonna need your help, folks. So what I'm gonna ask you to do then is we'll think about each part of a plant, one through six, and every time we get another one, Colleen will wear that part of the plant too, and we'll see if we can turn her into a plant from head to toe. First things first, let's think about the very first part of a plant that grows. When it sprouts in the springtime, the very first part that grows doesn't grow up, it grows down into the ground, anchors the plant to the earth, and draws in water and nutrients that will help the plant grow. Can you think of a plant part that grows underground and is it responsible for absorbing moisture and nutrients from the soil? You might be thinking of a crunchy orange root like I am. One of my very favorite roots, in fact, is a carrot. And I have two carrots, so maybe you thought of those too. Let's go ahead and put them on the right part of Colleen to transform her two legs into two carrots. Now that she's been able to absorb enough moisture and nutrients from the earth, she wants to grow tall. So there's another part of a plant that's usually at the center of the plant, but letting it grow straight and strong holding it upright. Can you think of that part that's usually at the center of the plant, keeps it standing tall? You're right, we're thinking about stems. I'd like you to think now about a stem that is crunchy and green and is often sliced up with carrots in a school lunch and might even go well with some peanut butter on it. Yep, I'm thinking about celery. I happen to have an extra large piece of celery <laughs> for Colleen today, so, Let's see how it might attach to her. Colleen, the plant now has roots and a stem. Our next plant part is in some ways the most important part of all. This part is a solar energy panel that will collect the sun's energy and make food for the plant. And if people eat the plant, it'll make food for us too. So I want you to think if you've ever helped somebody make a salad, what part of a plant usually makes up most of a salad. It's flat, it's green, and on a living plant, its job is to collect the sun's energy. If you're thinking of a leaf, such as spinach, lettuce, or cabbage, you're absolutely right. The, lettuce, the leaf I happen to have with me today is a lettuce leaf, but plants usually have a bunch of leaves, so We'll give Colleen the plant two leaves to wear. Goodness. <laughs> and I'm sure she'll hold them proudly up to the sun now and actually eat sunlight. So kids, we're not done. We have to go to them for three more parts. The first part is the trickiest of all because this first part is going to have to do a really important job. It's going to have to entice an animal helper to come to the plant. Now the plant can't go talking to the animals, it can't go running around after them. It's going to have to attract them to it with something beautiful. Can you think of a beautiful plant part that hummingbirds or honeybees or butterflies might like to visit, or maybe even people because it's so beautiful? You're probably thinking of a flower. So let's see how Colleen the plant looks with a flower on her. A beautiful flower that any <laughs> butterfly would be happy to flutter on by. But now we've come to the sad part of our story, kids, because at this stage, once the butterfly or honeybee or hummingbird has visited the flower, the flower's job is done. It's attracted an animal helper, that animal has delivered some pollen, and now it's going to shrivel up and fall off. It has to because the next plant part is going to take its place. The next plant part that grows in the place of the flower might be round, or it might be a much more interesting shape. And when it finishes growing, it might turn a beautiful color, and it might turn sweet and crunchy 
and kids might find it growing on a tree or a vine or some other kind of plant and pick it and eat it and have sweet sticky juice run down their chin. Can you think of what plant part I'm talking about right now? Yes, I'm talking about a fruit. There's lots of examples we could use, but you're probably going to think I'm kind of strange when you see the type of fruit I brought along today for Colleen the plant to grow because a lot of people don't know that it's a fruit. I'm talking about a pea pod, <laughs> an empty pea pod. But yes, it is a fruit because of what it protects. When it's full, it is protecting something very precious that will start the next generation of plants. So while a banana or an apple or an orange or a cherry is also a fruit because of what it has inside it, so is a peed pod, pea pod. And you might be able to think for yourself what that final ever so important part is that will start the next generation of plants. If you're thinking of peas that go in a pea pod, you're right. What part of the plant are those peas? I'll give you a hint. If you were to take those peas out of the pod, dry them out and keep them safe until next spring and plant them in the soil again, they'll grow into entirely new pea plants. Yes, we are talking about seeds. <laughs> peas are a kind of seed. And there, with those seeds, we have all six plant parts elegantly modeled by Colleen the plant. That's the six parts of a plant. Thanks for listening, folks. Mm -hmm.